Hey everyone, in the world of cloud computing, here are a few tech news highlights from this week. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech, and AI. I really appreciate all the support on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. It means so much to me and the Nelson Hilliard team. Make sure you remember to click the notification bell when you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on the latest shows and news. Check out our latest cloud tech blogs on migration, cybersecurity, security, blockchain, and all things cloud tech, and be sure to subscribe so you get our latest blogs. Below there is a link. Watch out for the new weekly cloud computing shows with David Lindicum, who is the world's number one cloud industry expert and internationally recognized thought leader. All of the shows are also on Stitcher and iTunes as podcasts. I've also included a link below. Remember to connect and reach out to me and my team. Below in the description box are the links to all the social media for LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. This week, the New South Wales government in Australia announces digital driver's licenses are now to be put on a blockchain. Australian firm SecureLogic has revealed a new platform which is calling TrustGrid is one of the key architectural components of the electronic vehicle license, which is expected to be in place statewide before the end of next year. The blockchain technology was used in the Dubbo trial earlier this year, while around 1,400 motorists opted in for the digital driving license. Secure Logic is now preparing for the first metro trial of the digital driver's license in Sydney's eastern suburbs from November this year. Secure Logic CEO Santosh Devaraj said in a statement that the platform would help put a stop to sophisticated fraudsters who can conjure up fake identities with relative ease. Too often license details are only checked superficially and this can now be replaced with cryptographic mechanisms. This week sees remote code EXEC found in Alpine Linux. Users of Alpine Linux are advised to update their installations, especially those used for Docker production environments, after a researcher found a remotely exploitable bug in the distribution package manager. Alpine Linux is popular with Docker users due to its small size package and repository. Crowdfunded bug bounty program Bounty Graph co-founder Max Justice managed to exploit Alpine.apk package files to create arbitrary files which could be turned into code execution. The bug discovered by Justice allows a malicious package mirror or attacker with a network man in the mirror middle position to run arbitrary code on users' machines. This week sees a ransomware attack that blacks out the flight screens at Bristol Airport in the UK. Flight information screens were blacked out over the weekend. Airport officials blamed the incident on a ransomware infection that infected the computers running the airport's in-house TV screens displaying arrival and departure flight information. This week, Mozilla co-founder filed a GDPR ad tech complaint against Google. Brave, a privacy-focused web browser set up by Silicon Valley engineering guru Brendan Eich, filed privacy complaints in Britain and Ireland that could become a test case against the search company Google and other digital advertising firms. The petitioners say they want to trigger an article in the new European General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR, requiring an EU-wide investigation, making it a test case for a new European Data Protection Board created to give the privacy regime more teeth. There is a massive and systematic data breach at the heart of the behavioural advertising industry. Despite the two-year lead-in period before the GDPR, ad tech companies have failed to comply, Brave's chief policy officer Johnny Ryan told Reuters. Google says it has already implemented strong privacy protections in consultation with European regulators and is committed to complying with the GDPR. If the regulator were to be found in favour of the plaintiffs, that could undermine the foundations of the data-driven model on with the online ad industry, forecast by research firm eMarketer to grow by 273 billion US dollars this year depends. I'm Brad Nelson and thanks for watching this week's Cloud Tech News. We hope you enjoyed it and get in touch if you have a news story from your company. And if you'd like to feature it, you can email us at media at nelsonhilliard.com. Remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and with your colleagues. You can also connect with me and my team on LinkedIn and find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And you can check out the latest shows with David Linticum and the podcast in the link in the description box below. Until next week, be good, be safe and keep our clouds secure.